Today, we'll choose an EV for a viewer who wants something to drive up mountain trails. A Kia Soul EV owner considering on trading up to a Chevy Bolt EV and a Canadian farmer who wants to replace his diesel truck for an electric one with good range and that can tow. Welcome to Battery Bargains, a series from the Batteries Included podcast. This is episode number 25. I'm Dominic Yoni and I am joined today by Tom Logney, Senior Editor at Inside EVs and host of the YouTube channel State of Charge, along with Jordan Scheif from the Out of Spec Studios. Now, if you're looking for your own battery bargain, email us a couple of short paragraphs with your use case and budget, and we'll see about featuring your case on an upcoming episode. All right, so let's kick this thing off with our first case for today. Uh, and to be transparent, we've paraphrased these emails a little bit for length and clarity. So you guys ready to go car shopping? Always. Do it. All right. Good to see you there, Jordan. This is your first time on Battery Bargains. That's right. It's a good show. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's see if we can uh, find some some vehicles for these. I almost said trucks for these guys because uh, <laughs> we have a, one truck later on. But this first first uh, letter comes to us from Truckee, California. So, all right. So, hello. And it comes to us from Dan. So, he writes, hello. We live in Truckee, California and daily drive a Kia EV6. I should share this with you all too, so you can see what's even going on. Here's Dan, and that's all up there, okay. It works well, but it has low ground clearance and can't do much with some of the trails or rough roads here in the mountains. When our Jeep Renegade lost its transmission, we thought it would be good to try to replace it with an EV with sufficient off-road abilities. We didn't want or could have, couldn't afford a, a Rivian, but the list of VVs with decent ground clearance is very short. The Subaru Solterra was a possibility, but we were daunted by its limited range and slow charge speed. Its depreciation is also extreme, so it's relatively affordable with very low miles, around thirty-five dollars to $40,000. However, it would be mainly a supplement to the Kia, and we have level two charging at home, so we thought maybe that's not so bad. The other option was a used Audi e-tron, which has similar limited range, but faster charging speed. It also seems to experience extreme dep uh, dep dep depreciation, excuse me, being available uh, a couple of years old with under 20,000 miles in premium plus trim for about the same price as a 2023 Subaru. Maybe we should wait for a 2024 Equinox, which has a lower ground clearance, but better range, decent charging and super cruise to take some of the daily load off the EV6. Its costs would push our, push our budget to past 50,000, which isn't so great, but at least it would be new. Any thoughts, Dan? All right, uh, Tom, can we hit you up for this first, first case? Why not? Um, so yeah, I, I like the way you're thinking with used, particularly if budget is, is important to you. It sounds like it is, uh, you know, the Solterra is an interesting proposition. I know somebody that owns one. They really like it. It's got great ground clearance. Um, it doesn't seem like this is going to be a vehicle that you need to do lots of road trips on. It seems, um, you know, and I've said this before on our shows, Kyle, I, uh, you know, some of the other people out there that do Jordan that do DC fast charge recordings and talk about road tripping EVs. I think sometimes we do a disservice to the community by um, kind of scaring people and saying, oh, this is a terrible charging EV. You have home charging. Don't worry about the fact that it doesn't charge as great as a Tesla on the three or four times a year that you might need public DC fast charging on a long trip. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. It's really, you know, you know, we do these trips and Kyle in particular does these races across the country. When people drive across the country, they're not racing. I know they don't want to wait an extra five hours to get to where they're going, but it, typically you're talking about an extra 15 or 20 minute stop. Just have another cup of coffee, take a breather and relax and enjoy life a little bit. Don't stress about the fact that some of these EVs don't charge as well as some of the others do. Uh, particularly for the use case that it appears that what you're going to be using it for isn't going to really be that important. So don't worry about the charging speed. I would focus on the, 
you know, getting a good value for a used electric vehicle, the e-tron's definitely always a consideration there. Uh, but you also seem like you're concerned about maybe, you know, getting something new. If you were to get a, a 2023 Solterra, it's new. Let's face it. You know, it's got a, a few thousand miles on it. I've seen the prices of these. They're dropping like a rock. Um, I think it's a good vehicle for your use case. And I would not deter you from going and trying to find a really good deal on a lightly used 2023 Solterra. I think that might be the right play for you. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. One vote for the Solterra. Uh, Jordan, what do you think? Yeah. So the Solterra I think is good. It is known for Subaru is known for their all wheel drive system. That's I think partially why Toyota may have partnered with them because they developed the all wheel drive system for this and the BZ4X. So the BZ4X is another consideration if you're not tied to the Subaru nameplate. But the other vehicle that comes to mind with the exact same ground clearance is the Volkswagen ID4, um, which might have a bit better road trip capabilities. Not incredible charging, but on par with the charging of the e-tron. And, you know, the e-tron does not have great ground clearance. It is um, barely better than EV6. It is better than EV6, but not much. So e-tron will be a very nice... I believe it's seven inches the e-tron. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it, it is a nice place to be. Like the e-tron will be the most comfortable inside, I think. But the ID4 is pretty good. I'm not always an advocate for ID4. For ID4. I don't love their software, but it's gotten a lot better over the years since it came out. Um, seems to be a pretty good all-wheel drive system. Um, me and Kyle have tested that plenty on some some trails here and there. So I would be pretty confident with that too. So I feel like this is one of those cases where you do have to just try each one and see how you like the interior, the fit and finish. Um, Cause the Solterra and BZ4X aren't my favorite interior, but they seem to do the job just fine. And like you said, the, the big limitation is consecutive DC fast charging instances. If you're doing road trips, which if you're doing a road trip, you're probably taking the Kia because that just rocks at road trips. It just swallows the miles like nothing else. So that's kind of where my mind went was to not, discount the possible id4 especially a lot of great bargains out there if you're looking for used but i do want to mention a brief very kind of tangential vehicle you had a jeep renegade you liked it um the most capable electrified vehicle at least in your price range would be the jeep uh wrangler 4xe now you would get trails maybe off-road <clears throat> or trails might be electrified because you get 26 miles ish um, which actually more like 30 miles of, on slow speeds off-road and you get the, all the full jeep characteristics but that is not a full ev so depending on your use case you might not want to even consider that one so how do, how do you think uh, have you tried the vw id4 off-road i just wonder how not its traction capabilities are yeah, not on anything. Well, actually, we did take it on something a bit serious, and it couldn't do it. But okay. it was such a serious hill that we we started. Um, we basically stopped taking everything on it because nothing could do it. So it was kind of up there with everything else in the same in the same boat. But it seemed like a pretty good all wheel drive strategy, and actually fairly fun on spirited canyon drives, allegedly. So um, that that one, I mean, it's you know, it's very German and just does everything properly. Didn't have right. any overheating issues. It felt very engineered pro appropriately so and i i feel every time i see an id4 i'm like ah that's a lot of ground clearance like usually for me that's like a, a turnoff but um in this case it's like oh it's unusually high in the ground clearance list of things so that might be beneficial for you right so, uh, so i'm looking at this list and I'm, or the, these two basic ones of the audi e-tron and the uh, super saltera and i kind of like lean Subaru Solterra, I think it'd be a little bit uh, less expensive to get into uh, mid or just a little bit, actually. Uh, right. I think the Audi e-tron is below 30,000 miles, around $30,000. And Subaru Solterra is looked to be around 25 ish or so. If you can get, uh, I guess there's not, there's not two years old yet, right? Because if, if they could, right. Okay. Because if it, if it was two years old and, and 25,000 or less, then it'd be eligible for the $4,000, uh, you know, uh, tax credit, which would be great. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of lean Solterra here just because I see, I think of the Audi e-tron as like just big and heavy and just maybe not as, um, agile through, you know, some trails, but it would be more comfortable, I would imagine. Uh, so there's that, I guess, but 
uh, looking forward, you mentioned getting a 2024 Equinox down the road, but I would suggest maybe if you want to replace that, maybe look at what the, um, the Jeep Recon coming out this year is like. I believe that's going to start around 60000 so also just a, a, a little out of your price range. But after a few months, there might be uh, something on the used market, like slight, light, very lightly used, and get rid of some of that depreciation and, and bring it down into your range. So I think that's like another consideration you might, uh, or another car you might consider, I guess. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I mean, if you if you buy and sell cars like Dave or Kyle or Tom, it's like, <laughs> um, it, it, it if you buy a used car, you're already buying at the the lower depreciation curve. So maybe you could could buy a Solterra right now, and then in a year or two, replace that with whatever is out. Because every calendar year, we see a whole new level of offerings from manufacturers that are better software, better charging performance. Just everything's getting better. We're riding this really cool uphill curve of seeing what the industry is capable of. Um, and I'm very curious about Jeep. I was really, really impressed with the, the four by E taking it on some, tr some gnarly trails in all electric mode. Um, so that's with that, I'm like, okay, I'm really curious to see what Jeep does with the rest of their lineup going full mm. electric from now on. Right. Yeah. They're going pretty aggressive, uh, moving towards electric too, over there at, uh, at Jeep. Um, all right. So I guess, uh, let's move on, I guess. So our next email comes to us from Mike. Uh, who sent us this and says, batteries included team. Is it worth to worth it to upgrade from a 2018 Kia Soul EV to a 2020, 2020 to 2021 Chevrolet Bolt EV? The obvious answer is yes, but I don't know for my use case. Here's my situation. The Soul is paid off and still gets 90 to 100 miles even on the coldest days. Commute is only 50 miles round trip and I have level two charging at home. I also feel nostalgia for the Soul EV. It's been discontinued in states for five years now, and this car is what got me interested in electric vehicles. The deals on bolts are so good right now, but the Soul's value is also so low. Six years old, 50,000 miles, and the car has been in an accident, so won't get that much for it as a trade-in. If I bought a bolt, I'd most likely have a car payment for two to three years. We want a three-row three EV in the future, but can't afford it right now. Uh, we have a three-row ICE vehicle, which we use for our occasional trips as a family of five. This Bolt decision means we could all we, we could be all EV in one to two years or three to four years. Long story short, should I save money and have the ability to upgrade to upgrade the family car with an EV sooner? or get the better bolt with double the range and have significantly better secondary car going forward. Any advice or opinions are appreciated. Thanks for all the work you do and the content you provide. Mike. All right. So, uh, Jordan, what, what do you think about this uh, key? So have you driven the key view? So have you ever seen a key? Soul EV actually? I've seen a few. Um, okay. my brother actually went to the launch back in, what was that? 2017, the press launch. Um, okay with our friend Forrest and that was such a cool car. They made such a big deal about the Kia Soul and the Kia Soul has a weird, uh, nice place in my heart for some reason. Um, right. actually just last week in Spain, I saw a manual diesel Kia Soul and I was like, that's pretty cool. But the EV Soul is very unique and special. And I'm the person who would like to drive something that is very weird and quirky and like turns eyes to enthusiasts, if that makes sense. So I definitely lean Kia Soul in this case, just keeping the Soul, and you know you're trying to save money for a, a better you know family three row SUV, which in that case maybe another battery bargains down the road. But I would already vote you know Kia EV9 as far as bang for buck three row SUV. That's really hard to beat. But the and then you'd have a Kia Kia vehicle family. I don't know. You keep the Soul around. Um, eventually have a kid drive it. I just think it's such a cool car. And if the range suits your needs there's not much of a reason to upgrade. Now the Bolt would have marginally better technology, um, especially if you found a Bolt with you know some better driver's assistance. You might really love that. You do have a 50 mile round trip commute. That's relatively long as far as commutes go for the US standards anyways. Um, so that's that's a consideration. And you know, DC fast charging with the Bolts is is nice, even though it's not quick, it's, it's still a, a feature. So I don't remember if the Soul has any sort of fast charging, but I know it's limited by its range. Mm, I can't remember about that actually either. T Tom, do you know if the DC, the sole DC fast charges? I'm pretty sure it's Chatamo. 
Okay. Is it? But I think it was an option. Oh. Okay, I don't. I don't, th- I don't do think. Some... I don't think it was standard. Maybe you could check that out while I jump in. Right. Um, you know, as I heard Jordan talking, it's exactly what I was going to say. Um, I really think the right play here is keep the soul, save your money, put your pennies away, save your money, and then get a good, say, like year and a half, uh, one to two year old Kia EV9 after it's taken the depreciation hit. And, um, you know, in, 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 you know, say a year, year and a half from now, you could probably get an EV9 at a steal. And, uh, you know, the, if, if, if the sole EV is performing, you know, what you need a car to do, like you said, it's a 50 mile round trip, 25 miles each way. You've got 80 to hundred mile range. Even in the winter, this thing can, can suit your needs. The smart play is to hold it. Uh, you know, but we don't always do the smart thing, you know, buying, vehicles are it's an emotional purchase it's not really a a, a a sensible a financial purchase most of the time we buy what we want what makes us feel good um and i can tell you're itching you know to maybe move on to something uh and i wouldn't dissuade you from getting a bolt i own a bolt ev it's a great little car um re- really really good car and you might even be able to find one that just had a battery replacement so you may get a a, a, a car that's a couple of years old but has a, a four month old battery um, so, so there's that, but honestly, looking at you from a distance, I think the right play is to hold on to the soul EV. It's a cool EV. It's quirky. There's not a lot of them out there. Um, use that up, drive it to the ground, save your money and get yourself a nice three roll family EV, whether it's an EV nine or something else that, that comes along at some point. Um, and, and, you know, you, you let somebody else take the depreciation hit and you pick one up, um, you know, and uh, who knows, maybe at that, maybe if you wait like three years, you can get like a lucid gravity used with like 5,000 miles for like $50,000 or something like that, or $45,000. Who knows what the depreciation is going to be. And, uh, you know, that that's a really cool uh, EV. So um, uh, hold on to your soul. It's a cool car. Uh, if it serves your purpose, save your money and then get something really, really that, uh, good that you'll be it'll put a smile on your face when you drive i think on that note you know if you, if you are itching for a change um you could look at something like selling the soul and then buying a, a, a well-used mini you know mini electric it's it's a similar experience i would say but it's still a different experience if you do want a change without dishing out money for a new ev there's so many of those on the used market as well and it's comparable range and features and even size to the soul so if you're just wanting a different experience i do think that's valuable but i think it is rewarding to just wait and get a nicer three row suv later on right i think that's a two-door though right the se cooper SE? it is yeah yeah family of five i don't know maybe I'm, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know how how big his his family his kids are but I mean, I know, I know. You, well, you're 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 into the small car life, Mister Miata owner. Miata owner. Yeah, even a soul <laughs> is like, man, five people in a soul. I don't. Maybe they're not really using all the people in the soul. Maybe it's just like his round trip commuter. I remember they're all like three kids in the back years old. In the soul. I, it's not big, but it's it's a hell of a lot bigger than a Mini Cooper. Right. It's impressively <laughs> big. That's that's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it's like one of those box designs, you know, where it's like, you know, actually really spacious inside compared to with the outside. Yeah. But, uh, so I think I need to kind of go with you, with you all. I think, um, I think he should save his soul. Um, <laughs> basically, <laughs> uh, yeah. And ho- just, yeah, really hold on. I mean, if, if it's doing the job and you like it, I mean, the Bolt would probably maybe give you a better ride and a little bit more modern and you know fresher in- interior. But if you're you're if you're happy with the 2018 uh, Soul EV, I think I'd just hold on to it and then save that money and go for the Kia EV9 on the used market down the, down the road. I I really think that's the move here, especially if your kids are small now and getting bigger. I think you'll really appreciate the EV9. Yeah, sounds good. Yep. Right. All right. I think something's going on with my, my microphones here, my headphones, but we'll power through. So our uh, last email comes to us from Steve. Uh, he says, hello, we own a farm in Athabasca, Alberta, Canada. That's like 200 miles north of Edmonton. We currently have a two year, two year old Tesla Model Y and it has been great. No issues in the cold. 
was minus 47 Celsius here last week. We are looking to, at replacing a 2004 GMC diesel truck, which is at the end of life. And we're planning to wait for Cybertruck, but current range is a letdown. We normally don't tow very far. The longest would be hauling cattle about 200 kilometers, 124 miles each way, but have a supercharger and CCS chargers en route. This only happens four times a year. Other use would be towing around farm area, maximum of 20 kilometers. That's like 12.4 miles. Uh, with superchargers opening up, I, I am thinking of a long range Ford F-150 Lightning. Have two 10 kilowatt AC chargers already installed, one Tesla and one J1772. Have 50 kilowatts of grid tie solar so we can charge for free during the day. We'll also use the new truck for a lot of long camping road trips. Plan to purchase a pop-up in-bed camper for either one. Can pick up a 2023 F-150 Lightning XLT with a 131 kilowatt hour battery for 84,000 tomorrow. Cybertruck would be a dual motor, but who knows how long that would take. I still have a Ford, uh, a Ford F450 ice truck if I need to tow very heavy or very far, bales, tractors, skid steer, etc. Uh, there is no Rivian dealer, or that would also consider, consider that option. We'll pay cash, no financing or lease, Steve. All right, so Tom, this is an interesting case. Um, and, and you're a truck guy, you've had some, uh, and you have a Rivian, no, you have uh, a Ford F-150 Lightning yourself right now. XLT is yours or Lariat? It's a Lariat. All right, and it's sitting right there behind you. Yeah, it's charging right now, actually. You might even be able to see the, the light blinking on the Tesla. I mean, Tesla on the Ford, can you see? <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go. It's blinking on the uh, Charge nice. Station Pro. So pumping 19 kilowatts. Actually, you only get really about 17 and change into the battery with losses and everything. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I, as you were reading this, I was a little scared at first when you're saying 200 kilometers and it gets negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, Celsius, which is close to Fahrenheit at that temperature. They, I think right. they diverge at 40, negative mm -hmm. 40. So it's, it's very similar. <laughs> That's cold. Um, you know, I don't know if, you know, hauling cattle, even with the extended range lariat at negative 50 degrees will go 125 four miles you know maybe if it's really flat land but you did say you have superchargers on the way and ccs chargers but um are those superchargers superchargers that you'll be able to use because you know there's a good amount of superchargers out there the the v2s and even a lot of the v3s that aren't open for uh the lightnings to your other manufacturers to use yet i just took a trip up to uh uh new hampshire with my lightning uh recently and uh I couldn't believe I didn't check before I left. I fully planned on take using my adapters and charging at Tesla superchargers. None of the superchargers on the route I could I use none of them. Oh, it was oh. like there was like hundreds of miles where in a row where there were a ton of superchargers, but none of them were authorized for use. So I ended up using CCS chargers, which actually the experience was pretty pretty good. So I didn't have any issue with it. But so you have to make sure that that you'd be able to use these superchargers. And uh, my initial thoughts was, geez, this guy needs a Silverado with a 212 kilowatt hour battery pack. That would that would be ideal for you. But then at the end, you said you've got the Ford F450 that if you really need to haul long things distances. So that's a fallback vehicle. Um, so, uh, I mean, it sounds like the Lightning would work for you. The Lightning's thermal management system works really good in the winter. As long as you set preconditioning, you have it plugged in, it works really good to warm things up. I mean, I've uh, I, I've noticed that you know, when I, when I'm going on trips and it's really cold, if I had the preconditioning while it's plugged in, it really helps to mitigate the range loss, uh, on, on the vehicle. They have a good, lightning has good thermal management. Ford did a good job with it, both for DC fast charging and warming the battery up, but Silverado might even be a better fit for you at, at this juncture. Um, uh, you know, with the fact that where you are and the fact that, you know, you probably have to drive long distances, uh, would the lightning work? It would. Um, I'm a little, I have a little sticker shock from the 84,000 for, a uh, an XLT extended oh, it's Canadian range. dollars. That's Canadian. Yeah. Um, we can grab one for much less. I mean, here I see the XLTs with extended range battery in the sixties. Um, you could get them, you know, so, um, that's, it's unfortunate that you're paying that much more, but, um, in any event, 
I think the Lightning would work fine for you. I think you'd like it as long as you've got that fallback vehicle that for the long towing, the really heavy things. Um, I, you know, I've said it many times on batteries included. I, my Lightning is a fantastic truck. My friends who own farms and stuff around here that have driven it are like, this thing would work fine for me. Uh, you know, and, um, you know, I, w- I wouldn't say anything to dissuade you from getting it, but you should take a look at Silverado also. Um, I don't know if they're available up there yet, what the pricing is going to be, but um, it's hard to, 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 to displace that huge battery. I mean, that 212 kilowatt hour battery pack is nice to have, especially if you're doing farming and long distance driving like you sometimes do. Right. Hey, Jordan, you don't own a truck. But we both drove a bunch of pickup trucks across the country, you know, just a few weeks ago. And I believe you were, what you were, oh, you were in the Ford F-150 Lightning. So you're very familiar with that. But you've also been doing all kinds of towing testing and off-road testing with, with trucks in the, in the weeks since then. So I think you have a pretty good feel of uh, the, the, what the trucks out there, the electric trucks out there, what their capabilities are. So what do you think about this farmer, farmer situation? Yeah, you know, I haven't driven my own cars in a month because we've just been driving trucks for literally one solid month. So yeah. I'm trying to remember what normal cars are like. But yeah, uh, spent a lot of time with Silverado, Rivian, Lightning, and Cybertruck. Um, I am such a fan of the Cybertruck. And if you do want that freedom of, oh, all the Tesla superchargers will just work, there's something to be said about that. But, well, actually, we've had some various issues here and there, but I'm sure they're they're patching that up. You know, it's it's early days with the Cybertruck still. But I wouldn't say like arguments over range and towing range and stuff because these all these trucks, what we've seen is pretty much the same. At a full battery, whether you're towing or not, they all are pretty close to each other, not enough to make a serious buying decision differential. What strikes me as um a farm truck is a bit more of the lightning because it's just more of a standard truck you know f-150 accessories intentionally work with the f-150 lightning whether it's gas hybrid full electric whatever they just all work um cyber trucks really interesting to me but it is definitely a different beast i mean even if you you know trying to use a tractor to load things into the bed that's going to be a different experience with that sloped uh angle on the side of the bed of the cyber truck versus the lightning is normal truck bed um all the pro power on board stuff all the lighting around the truck you know for zone lighting whatever they call it that thing is just such a beast um so i would say that's a a pretty safe bet and maybe in nice weather you could do that 200 kilometer towing situation but i um you know i wouldn't count on it in the cold but it does do well in the cold like tom said the thermals seem really great and i've i had a lot of fun towing with the lightning it just really treats your load like you can't even tell it's there it's got some great reversing capabilities you know the cyber truck we found to be a bit interesting towing that the steering was a little twitchy because it is the steer by wire system and the rear wheel steering and everything it was it was the least pleasant to tow with it'll still do it it still handles it just fine but and especially around the the farms like oh really nimble with the four wheel steering and everything but i don't know the lightning is just like a proper normal truck and maybe that's appealing to you one other thing you mentioned in your email was uh the, the camping you know pop-up camper and stuff that's not going to work on the cyber truck either so um that would be well unless you buy their own proprietary system which is not really a pop-up camper anyway so if you're looking at you know campers which are probably more likely to be made for a traditional truck such as the lightning that's your solution yeah i'm i'm going to Agree mostly with you, but I re- I'd like to see them get to go for Silverado. So I, I pulled up, uh, I pulled up the uh, t- the Chevy Silverado Canadian website, and it says the 2024 Silverado EV WT and RST models anticipated availability availability first half of 2024. So if they're not on sale, they're up there yet. They will be soon. I'm not sure what the price is, but you know, up to 10,000 pounds of towing, like. Uh, 785 pound feet of torque, just like all kinds of capability there. And I'm not sure if it's as quick as the uh, Ford F-150 Lightning. It's but 4.5 seconds zero to 60 is a, a plenty. <laughs> That's the uh, about the same. And I I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I, I if the Silverado is available. That's, you know, that's the thing you mentioned in your email. Oh, you get a lightning tomorrow, which makes right. me think there's some urgency, but right. um, you know, you didn't know when the Cybertruck would come out, but I 
you could probably get a Silverado before Cybertruck if I had to guess. And that is also a beastly normal truck. Um, it does have a little bit of a slope at the back of the cab going into the bed, but you know, it's, it's, it's normal bed nears makes no difference. Great usable frunk. I don't know if it has, does it have the, um, you know, the 240 charging in the, the back bed, the Silverado. I don't remember if it does, I but I can't remember it does. for sure. Okay. Yeah. It I, does, I figure yeah. they wouldn't leave that out. It's yeah. right. You know, work, work truck capability. And that, oh, it, that yeah, bigger it's... battery is just such a beast. It's got the weird, I think it's got a weird, uh, it's one of the weird ones. It's not like the typical 240 plug that you would think. It's like a slightly different one, but it's like for it's an, like oh. a generator plug. But they 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 have the adapters, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, but so you towed with the Silverado EV over the mountains. How did it do towing the Tesla Model Three on a trailer? Yeah. So that it was un, unbeatable. I mean, it went the entire 500 miles and needed to recharge the one time, whereas the other trucks needed three stops or so um so the other three trucks all were the same silverado or not silverado you know lightning cybertruck rivian all performed about the same um mm -hmm. which was interesting because they all have slightly different specs but even the profile of the truck and how it affects the airflow going to the load on the bed or in the trailer that all plays into it the silverado though just brute force throw batteries in it and you can go further <laughs> who knew right um and it, it it towed great everything just worked super well well, they, yeah. th those three trucks roughly have a, the same size battery, give or take like 10 kilowatt hours, I think, right? What's Cybertruck? Yeah. I forget. What's the gross Cybertruck? 120 uh, something? Oh, or? Uh, well, I think it was about one mid 120s usable. And then the, yeah, Lightning so it's 131. It, Rivian yeah. is, uh, you know, what is it, 135 or something? I forget. I think so, yeah. All close. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah they're all was, super. So, yeah. so I would expect them to all perform relatively well, to, re relatively simi similarly towing. But the, the Silverado 212, boom, like, you know, with a hammer, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, you can't replace kilowatt hours, you know, when you're doing something like that. I mean, that's nuts. So with the, uh, one, one last thing with the Silverado EV, Jordan, uh, the 3WT or 4WT, because one's the 4WT has got more range, but it has less towing capability. Um, yeah, a bit less payload because of the extra weight of the battery. You know, even okay. the 3WT would be great. Uh, it's still, that's still 50 kilowatt hours more than the other trucks. Right. Um, and then you can take it even further with a 4WT. So I think it depends on your towing load. And But like you said, he has a Ford F450 for right. some beastly things if he needs it. But right. so maybe the 3WT type battery size would be a good middle ground. I, I wonder if the other truck makers will ever kind of go that route and have some bigger batteries or if they'll just try to focus on efficiency in their own smaller battery ways i think stellantis is going ram i think the ram is going going with a big battery attempt That'll approach be as well yeah and and the range extended one which is kind of odd it's using those two long long range strategies you know very different but yeah they're both going to be a pricey you know compared to uh, you know a truck with just batteries instead of a battery and a with a small battery instead of a huge battery and a battery and a motor all that stuff yeah but yeah so i would that's my thing anyway yeah silverado ev and it sounds like he you know will pay cash no financing early so i think he's not worried too much about it and plus it's a farm so he can write it off and it's taxes it's all farm equipment so yeah so i think that brings us to the end of our show if you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them below or get in touch with us on the social media platform of your choice. Don't forget, if you like the show, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget, if you didn't like the show, please give us a thumbs up. Click subscribe, tap that bell icon for notifications. Thank you all very much for joining us, and we'll see you all again very soon. Ciao.